I know, I know. You've all, you've all missed me. But it's not about me. Talk about SmackDown. And it returned to my hometown of New York. And no, I wasn't there, as you see. I'm at home. Oh, wait, I forgot something for Kyle. Hold on, hold on. Kyle, I didn't forget it. I don't know if you can see it in the frame, but I have his little food cart here because, you know, he likes to make fun of me for it. So don't worry, Kyle. I brought it. But let's waste no time. We are here reviewing the September 10th episode of Friday Night Smackdown and what a jam back show we had. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talks Wrestling and we are starting... garden in two years which is insane and we had so much going into this you know Brock Lesnar was returning um my man was wrestling Edge again and this was a really fun show and you know a lot of people were speculating that after All Out that WWE was really going to change the game and just try to focus on different things and although they did not do that I will say that this Smackdown was probably the best of the year and that there was a lot of energy everyone was really excited they really treated this like a big show now I'm gonna go off of speculation because it has been speculated that Zelina Vega was actually supposed to be on last night's episode of Smackdown but her match was cut so if you don't know, Zelina Vega's dad actually died in the 9-11 attacks, which is the 20th anniversary today, as it will be posted on 9-11. And I don't necessarily know if she was actually scheduled for a match and they canceled or whatever, but to leave Zelina off a show like that in her hometown, like that was kind of messed up, especially that show. And I, I, I believe, now remember, I've been on vacation for two weeks, so I have not... Well, first of all, Aruba doesn't even have, like, wrestling anywhere. So, freaking Aruba. Anyway, so, I believe this was the second or third week in a row where there's been no women's match on SmackDown. Which is crazy. Um, do we need to step it up? You know, I'll take a Becky segment any day of the week. We'll talk about Becky. But, yike. But let's start with how they kicked off the show with the bloodline. So, you know, it, Brock Lesnar was returning, and Roman Reigns, and the Usos were out there saying that they run MSG, they run SmackDown, they run WWE, and Brock came out, and I was very intrigued, because Brock doesn't cut promos, and Brock goes, so Paul, why didn't you tell Roman that I was going to be at SummerSlam? Oof. <laughs> and the funny part here is, it was literally within the first, like, three or four minutes where we had to mute the crowd because they were cursing. They cur I think they muted them, like, two or three times, and it was so funny. So, you go, New York. I love you guys. So, this segment was really interesting because, you know, you got to see what side Heyman was taking. Either Paul, not Paul, wow, either Roman or Brock. And he didn't necessarily pick a side, you know, Reigns and Deuces got mad that they he didn't tell them that Brock was going to be there. They walked out and Brock said, you know, like, before they fire you, um, can you make Roman accept the challenge for my match for the Universal title? And then nothing ever happened. Um, Brock was going to attack Paul and then Reigns and Deuces saved him. So this match is going to take place at Crown Jewel, or whatever they're going to call the Saudi show. Um, I mean... This segment was really good. I would have rather seen this match at a local pay-per-view. Um, but I, I guess it'll do. But it's going to be interesting to see, obviously, within the next couple weeks, we're going to see, like, if Paul's going to go with Brock, if Paul's going to go with Roman. So it should be interesting to see where it goes. Then from there, um, we'll talk about Becky. So Becky and Bianca were signing the contract. And bless Becky's heart, because Becky's been trying so hard to, like, put herself over as a heel. And she did it in New York, you know. She said, oh, like, what if I don't sign this contract? Like, what happens? Like, why do I deserve to sign this contract? I saved you guys, because you guys were in a scramble last minute. I left my, I left my house. I left Rue. 
which is Becky and Sans Child. I left Rue at home and you want me to defend my title and, and like why? Like why am I doing this for you? What am I getting out of this? So that was really interesting and I actually got the New York crowd to boo, which was really, really cool. Meaning that Becky's been trying so hard to get herself over as a heel and she definitely did it here. She eventually signed the contract, so this match is set for Extreme Rules in two weeks. I'm really excited for this match. I mean, I'm hoping it's longer than 26 seconds, which she also did keep taunting Bianca with like, oh, you know, maybe I was going to give the match tonight, but it, I would have beat you in 20 seconds instead. Like, it wouldn't have been 26, it would have been 20. And the ma like the line of the night was really when Becky said, you know, you're booing me, yet when I was on my couch at home, all you guys kept chanting was, we want Becky. Which ain't a lie. Like, that was that's a really good line. So, the, also the funny thing is, Becky came out with a red fur jacket, and if you look at what Seth is wearing now, Seth is wearing a white, like, feather furry jacket. So, like, like, white, like, husband, like, wife. And now from the man to the man's man, hoof this match. So, this match, it was still really good, don't get me wrong. Edge and Rollins, their match at SummerSlam was great, their match last night was great, but there were a couple botches from Seth, and it was really scary. Um, the glam slam, he didn't hit it right the first time, and I was like, oof. And then there was one point um, where he does this thing on the rope where he flips over, um, he missed, and he stumbled, and he fell into the ropes, I was like, oof. Seth, what are you doing? So that scared me a little bit. I mean, not saying that this match was bad. Like I said, this match was still really good, but the Bob just kind of scared me because I'm like, Seth doesn't do this. Whoa. Um, and so I'm assuming this is going to go to a match three at Extreme Rules because how the match ended was that Rollins cheated. There was a ref, but um, he like elbow, like elbowed Jessica in the face and hit Edge with a low blow. And then he... Oh, that's an interesting commercial for Rose to the Top. Okay. Anyway, so he had the low blow to Edge, and then he kicked Edge in the face like five or six times, and then hit the stomp, and then everyone's like, oh my god, his neck. And then they were strolling him off in the ambulance, and, <laughs> the, like, the interviewer was like, oh, Seth, how do you feel? And Seth's like, um, I, I don't, I mean, my arm kind of hurts. I really don't know how to feel. Um... Am I supposed to feel like a certain way? Like, how do you feel? And it was just so funny, and I'm like, damn, like, Seth has no emotion anymore. So this is probably going to lead to a match three. I don't necessarily know what the stipulation is going to be. Um, or what, like, I don't know, because to me, Extreme Rules match, oh, but that's probably going to go to Roman and the Demon, which we'll get to next. So I don't know. So you should all comment what stipulation you guys think this match is going to go to, because I really don't know. Um, yeah, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I mean, I would say a ladder match, but, like, they're not really fighting for anything because neither of them are champions, so. Oof. And then we go to the main event. So I was actually shocked that Rollins and Edge didn't main event because it was, like, very much announced that this was going to be the main event, but given what ended the show, I'm actually excited that this was not the main event. So. It was the Street Profits versus the Usos for the tag titles, and this match was really good. The Street Profits and Usos can put on really good matches, as we've seen. And the Street Profits were about to reclaim their tag titles, and Roman came in, and Roman saved them. So the match went to a DQ, so I'm assuming this match is also going to be Extreme Rules. And, you know, Roman's standing there, and Roman takes the mic, and he goes, you know, what did I all tell you before? I run MSG, I run The Garden, I run WWE, like, we're not doing this. And all of a sudden the lights go out, and you hear the music, and you see the red lights, and it is not The Fiend, it is the Demon King himself, Finn Balor, in really cool face paint. And I don't know what kind of shorts he was wearing, like, I don't, I don't know if that's new or not, but that was, that was really weird. And the, the smack that ends with the Demon King and Roman Reigns facing off. So this is absolutely amazing. I don't necessarily remember the last time. I believe the last time we saw the Demon was when he faced the Fiend. In the Fiend's first feud. I could be wrong. I'm not necessarily sure. But I'm like, that's what I'm envisioning the last time I saw the Demon. Because we didn't see him in the second run. In the second run the next day. But I'm really excited. This actually adds a lot to the match because there's a lot that Roman can play off of. And you could say like, oh, Roman's so indestructible that you need a demon to beat him. So this is 
this is fun. This is gonna be really, really fun. I'm excited for this match now. And I mean, who doesn't love Demon Finn Balor? I mean, come on. So SmackDown was really good. I mean, Trey Young was there, and there was like a ten man tag. I think that's the only segment I'm actually missing. But it it was like a fun ten man tag. You know, like oh, the faces win, yay. That scared me. So that's really it. Like I said, I thought this episode of SmackDown was really fun. I don't. Uh, this is kind of the attitude they need to have for the next coming weeks to try to like get the WWE's moment at the back because now a lot of people are watching AEW and given what AEW's been doing the last couple months then we need to get back on that momentum trail so yeah so after that's gonna be my Rampage review so check that out and then in that Rampage review I'll list all the things I need to list of where you can find me but yeah I'm back yay bye